it actually switches to these encoders here on the GPU and keep playing back on the GPU and boom, and now it's switched to the CPU as you can see, boom. That's interesting, why doesn't it keep it going on the, the NVENC encoders? Welcome to Technotist, my friends. Sorry about the messy setup, but this over here is one beast of a PC. When I say one beast, it is seriously insane. 64 core CPU, 128 threads, two RTX 3090s, 256 gigabytes of RAM, super fast storage, insane powerhouse. So how good does it do in DaVinci Resolve, which actually can utilize two GPUs when they're NV linked together and they have very good support for GPUs like that. So let's try the timeline performance in DaVinci Resolve with this beast of a guy. Let's go. ArtGrid is an online stock footage platform that offers the highest quality stock video from HD to 8K, ProRes, Log and RAW formats. Active subscription provides you access to unlimited downloads and a royalty-free worldwide license. The license doesn't expire even when the subscription has been cancelled. ArtGrid catalog is updated daily and the subscription can be configured to fit your needs. Get two months for free when joining ArtGrid through the links in the description below. So then, just to show you, we have Threadripper Pro 3995WX, 64 core, just for the laugh, we can have all of those threads and cores here going. Then we have 256 gigabytes of DDR4, this is 3200 megahertz and this is ECC memory and it's an 8 channel kind of chip over here so we have 8 DIMMs occupied. Then we have 2 RTX 3090s and they're linked together by this NVLink. Our DaVinci Resolve is 17.4.6 build 6. Let's start. So this is just the usual uh, H.264 footage. By the way my timeline is 4K, I've got no proxies enabled nothing like that. So 4K timeline we're testing. Seems like no problem here playing this back. By the way, I have got a color grade on these clips as well. So if we go here, you can see there's curves, lot one, lot two, and noise reduction, which seems to be quite heavy on some computers, but that's what really is gonna shine in here with the RTX 1390s. No problem, 25 frames per second here. Breezes through as well. Plays very instantly. As you can see, as I'm clicking through the timeline, it still keeps playing. I'd say very good. And this is 4K 60 frames per second. Breezing through here. It's a little bit choppy actually in, in some ways. 4 to 0 and 4 to 2, 60 frames per second, 4K. This is still H.264, so not a very efficient codec. If we press play here, this goes all on the CPU. CPU's got like, yeah, no problem. I've got plenty of power to play this back. Now, some of the Intel 12th gen actually do a better job than this here, just because they've got hardware encoding for some of these. But this one is actually accelerated on the NVENC. If I press play, we should be seeing here, see video decode. See, it should be on this GPU now playing back. Is it this one? Maybe it isn't. So now this is H.265 codex here. First of all, a 10 bit 420. So this should be accelerated now on the NVENC encoders. So these GPUs, whoa, they're getting warm here. Timeline is, is all right, let's press play. 420 10-bit, this should be on the, the NVENC encoders. That's very interesting actually, because look, if, if I'm going on the timeline like this, like trying to scroop through, look at this, boom, we're using the decode for the timeline. Yet when, oh look at that, but now it's actually using this on there as well. If I just press play, look here, we'll pause it, we're gonna press play, look at that, it's not actually using the NVENC, to play the back the the footage. It actually uses CPU, as you can see, 10% there. Look at this, 10% used, bear that in mind. Now, if I'm just gonna scrub through this timeline, look, it's still playing, but I'm gonna scrub through, and then I'm gonna leave it playing. What happens is, look, it actually switches to these encoders here on the GPU, and keep playing back on the GPU, and boom, and now it's switched to the CPU, as you can see, boom. That's interesting, why doesn't it keep it going on the, the NVENC encoders. It must know that 
it's a little bit easier to play back on the CPU rather than the NRENC encoders, so on software rather than hardware acceleration, but just very interesting kind of uh, observation here. So this is 10-bit 420, press play here. Everything seems to be going on the CPU. The NVENC probably just kind of accelerates the timeline scrubbing performance to kind of give you more frames when you're scrubbing through here. So now this is H.265 4K 422 10 bit. This is not accelerated on any of the GPUs. Obviously, this here is a little bit better than 422. This. If you had Intel chip, that would be very, very smooth. This over here is the Canon R5, 422, 60 frames per second, H.265, which usually is very hard to play back. Let's see. Okay, see 20, 30% of the CPU utilized there, and we're playing this back. What's the timeline performance like? It's a little bit choppy. A little bit choppy. Let's take the color grade off. Let's see what it's like then. Still the same because we've got so much GPU power, the color grade doesn't actually make a difference. If you press play, it does play it. Oh, look. I oh, know it is. It's playing back like full on, no problem. But if you scrub it around, it's not the best timeline performance I have seen. That's, that's not as smooth as what you would get on the Intel's 12th gen with the UHD 770. Just have a look at like some of my videos there. 120 frames per second. Let's see what happens here now. Scrubbing on the timeline. Still quite choppy on this, uh, on this clip. I'm gonna go this way like that. This is H.265. 422 H265 as well. The previous one was 420. It's not very good in terms of the timeline performance, if I'm completely honest with you. Like, I have seen better timeline performance, but just interesting seeing that actually having a PC built for specific purpose doesn't just always mean more power is better. It's more like more optimized certain processes will work better than this here. It's, it's honestly like I'm not I'm not impressed. I'm gonna s jump straight to a uh, 5k red raw here and Look at that. That's that's so smooth buttery smooth That's usually when things get hard, but for this PC. That's like when it actually gets started H.265 <laughs> and 4 codex not really the greatest, but look at this This is brilliant. This is B raw 6k Obviously, no problem playing any of this back. It's super, super smooth. B-Raw is very easy to do as well. This is red 6K raw. Timeline is extremely, extremely smooth. Let's see if we can put the timeline to 6K as well. Okay, let's put 8K timeline, right? 8K timeline, this is red raw 6K. It's still very, very smooth. Let's press play. Okay. Look at these GPUs now. Utilized. It's not the greatest when you put on 8K timeline. Is there a 6K timeline here as well? Okay, that's, I think probably this you would still edit on a 6K timeline. Sorry, 4K timeline. And that's no problem. If you move to Canon R5, this is uh, 8K Canon RAW R5 from the Canon R5. And then let's have a look at the the kind of scrubbing. It's very good. Bear in mind, this is 4K timeline now. But on Premiere Pro, we actually tested this on full resolution. So let's try this on 8K as well and see if the scrubbing is any different. Not very smooth. Let's press play. Let's see what happens. Yeah, see? Similar like in Premiere Pro, as you can see. So there isn't that much difference between DaVinci and Premiere Pro. 
in terms of timeline performance and how they play this back, like Premiere Pro is very much the same. Some people say, well, DaVinci Resolve is so much better. Maybe like in exporting certain things, but this here looks very much like what we did the same test on um, Premiere Pro. So if we kind of go on 4K timeline here now, so that's like kind of half the resolution. It's quite smooth. If you press play, then it plays back. Like Premiere Pro did exactly the same thing, except like the resolution playback was much easier to adjust on the corner over here rather than going in the cogs there. But hey, just a, you know, difference in taste. Now moving on to Red 8K RAW. Let's try the 8K timeline first. So this is on an 8K timeline. Tries to make a lot of frames here. Bear in mind, this is with all the same color grade as before. We've got two lots, curves, and noise reduction applied. Let's press play. That's fascinating. Let's take the color grade off. Yeah, it plays it back, no problem. When we apply the color grade, that noise reduction is actually quite quite hard to play back. That's what I've figured out. There's quite a lot of different noise reduction. Look at these, this GPU on 3D. It's so utilized. I'm probably pulling about 1,000 watts from the socket right now. Pressing play. Sorry, here. Let's have a look at the GPUs. One GPU pulling 278 watts. The other GPU pulling 280 watts. We're pulling over 500 watts from the GPUs. 550 watts plus, what is it, 190. We're about 800 watts pulling just from this system over here. Plus all the other fans and everything else. It's ridiculous. Just playing it back is like boiling a kettle downstairs. If we take the color grade off, I mean, look at this now. This is super, super smooth. This is with a 8K timeline, and this is really what you'll be doing. The actual noise reduction, if you apply that, that's probably what you'd have to like render out or something like that. But other than that, it's very, very smooth. So if we take this um, shark clip, for example, here, let's put the color grade on, and we'll go to color grade tab here. And I'm going to take the noise reduction off here. Okay, let's press play. Look. No problem playing this back now here. Look at the timeline performance. It's very, very smooth with two lots, curves and everything applied. It's no problem. The noise reduction is the big thing that it can't do. So if anyone's doing the noise reduction as well as some of the color grading, as you can see, look, jump to the second clip, which has noise reduction and everything on. Just can't play this back. So I might have to change like my color grades to without the noise reduction because that's quite hard to do for a lot of these clips here. This is a 12K b rot just so you know. Look look at this. Like, each frame is 85 megapixels, something like that. So let's press play here. Not quite able to play this back. Interestingly enough, um, the Winter Resolve is not so bad on the RAM usage. Like, on Premiere Pro, we could see, like, about 100 gigs used at this point doing exactly the same thing. But more now here, the VRAM is used here. Look at that. Dedicated GPU memory, maxed out, maxed out, or using all the memory on the actual GPU memory. Which is probably a better idea if you have a lot of it, because it's much faster than the actual RAM. But it's still not able to play this back. Let's see, without the color grade. Yep, on an 8K timeline, look super smooth without the color grade. We're able to play it back, no problem. This is probably one of the best uh, PCs I've seen play back to Winter Resolve on an 8K timeline, this 12K B raw footage. So last thing I wanna check over here is like our temperatures, okay? I can see that the CPU temperature maximum over this test here has hit 75C. And this is very good. This is air-cooled Noctua NHU14S, as you can see with dual fans. And we have a lot of warm air coming up over here and the side panel isn't on, so we're not actually making a good airflow. So a lot of the good airflow that we're making is just coming out from here, which is probably not the best for cooling. Our GPUs, uh, 62C one of them and 67C the other one. 
So I think it's completely fine as well. We've pulled 331 watts from one of them max and 329 max of the other one. If we look at the CPU max power draw, 279 watts. So to have 280 watts pulled from an air-cooled CPU and have maximum temperature of 75C, I'm quite happy. So in terms of the hardware, it completely keeps up with this. So then in conclusion, is this PC good for DaVinci Resolve video editing? Now, if you're doing a lot of like mirror less camera footage and 4k editing then i think this is much overkill and actually quite a waste of money in terms of what hardware you're spending on and what you're actually getting in return much rather go with something like the 12900k and this is going to be like third of the cost of this whole system ddf5 you know and something like that although if you do 8k maybe a lot of you know 8k rendering 8k color grading 8k like footage timeline playback for like movies or something like that then probably this over here is a much better pick well it is a much better than like something like a 12900k just because the cpu power that handles the 8k and then these two rtx 1390s to play back all the color grade and things much better in here but i think most like you know prosumer level content creators this is an absolute overkill of a system but still a much better system than a mac pro for the same price so if you look at the mac pro for the same price wow this is gonna be so much better here this cost about 17 grand or something like that or twenty thousand dollars something like that but if you went and got a Mac Pro for that type of money, oh, it's embarrassing. Very, very embarrassing, the performance difference you would get. But obviously, it's a little bit of a different comparison. But let's say if you did DaVinci Resolve editing, then this would be much better than a Mac Pro. So then, thanks guys for watching. Likes if you enjoyed it. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. I'd love to know from you what's your thoughts on this. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.